of our. We'll just give it a moment here, make sure it's up and ready. Good morning. How are you, Katie, this morning? I am doing amazing over here. We're supposed to be getting um, an ice storm um, in Texas starting, wow. goodness, what is it? I think Thursday. So everybody is like, oh my goodness, <laughs> what are we going to do? <sighs> Oh, wow. Yeah. What are Texas folks going to do? I'm out here in Minnesota, so that's nothing. But out there in Texas, it's got to be pretty challenging. But you're from the Midwest, so it's like you you get this. Yeah, me and my husband both, we're both from the Midwest. So for yeah. us, we're like, okay, we can handle this. We've got this. <laughs> How much fun it is for the kids, I think, this morning. Oh, Tons. Well, they're, yeah, they're probably like, no, what are the odds of that? That is exactly how my kids are feeling right now. Um, and me and my husband, we celebrated our 10 year anniversary yesterday. So that's oh, all. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh, and what did you guys do? Honestly, like most of you guys know, we have eight horses, nine horses. Mm -hmm. And um, so we had to get hay for our horses. We went to lunch. Oh, nice. Yeah, we, we tried to mix it up a little bit. We're going to celebrate more this weekend. Oh, that's fun. So you kept it low key. Yes. Oh, I love that. Well, folks, if you are joining us, come on in, join us here in Zoom and join us here and join us for the CEO Power Hour. Katie and I are all about really right? Like conversations, real conversations with real people as we are growing our businesses to hit those happy sales faster. So today's topic, I'm really excited for Katie and I both to come on because we're going to be talking about how do you sell when confidence is missing? How do you boost confidence? How do you find that confidence when sales is, is missing? And especially when you are selling in the high ticket or premium pricing, and you're looking to attract premium ready to invest customers, you have to show up confident, right? And that's really different than just selling, you know, a course or a lower price point in a program or a product. Okay. Usually I often talk about how there's a difference between tracks traction versus transaction. And today we're going to be diving in. Katie and I are going to be sharing with you some of our best practices that both of, uh, both of us have discovered working and coaching with different clients at various stages of their business to really help them find confidence when it's missing, right? So before we dive right in, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and welcome um, Sabine Schwartz to our High Performance CEO Book Club. Can we just give a shout out to say congratulations to Sabine Schwartz? She is a business coach and an RTT practitioner. If you're not familiar with what RTT is, it is rapid therapy transition, I think. RTT, rapid therapy transformation practitioner. That's what it is. And she actually is in Berlin, Germany, and she's going to be joining us inside of the CEO High Performance Book Club. I had an opportunity to have a connect call with her, and I just really love her mission, her vision of really helping mamapreneurs break through mindsets. And so her and I were talking and she's going to be joining us inside of the CEO High Performance Book Club. It is a membership community and we meet once a month. We try to alternate between 11 a.m. Central Time and 4 p.m. Central Time. We do networking and then we talk about the conversations around the book club. So for instance, this month we are reading Your Pocket Life Coach. And the idea behind the High Performance Book Club is that in just 10 minutes of reading per day, you are focused on growing your mindset. And this could be reading the actual book or doing an audio. I often get the question, Elizabeth, what if I'm not into reading and I'm just into the audio? Do the audio book. Some books, it's better to have a hard copy because they're like workbooks. But this is a really great book. 
I love what Laura said here. I have to share with you. Um, Laura Moa, who is also part of the book club, she has been reading this as well. And, you know, basically, if you've never been a part of a book club, the idea is you finish your book, you go at your pace. And then when we go to our next meeting, you just come with questions. And everything that we're doing is really focused on Professor Kara Dwight's work on the growth mindset. And I will be leading and facilitating the conversations. And it's really about the, the takeaways from the books and how we can identify our own fixed mindset triggers. There's about six to eight different fixed mindset triggers. And that's something that when you join the High Performance Book Club, I make the growth mindset cheat sheet available to you. And that really becomes the anchor of our book club conversations. So here's what Laura said so far. I love Laura Moa. She is part of our book club. And she said, so far, I am really enjoying this book. It's already challenging me in ways I haven't thought about before. And it's such an easy read. A lot of the questions were quite difficult to answer right? But I love this question from chapter two, which is, if you were 80 years old, what would you want to celebrate? And she says, hope all of you are enjoying the book as well. Hope reading to all of you, happy reading to all of you, right? And so this is a different type of conversation. This is really about us coming together, a like-minded individuals, compassionately ambitious, looking to really have some deeper, more meaningful conversations, not because we're better than anyone else, but because we want to be better than we were yesterday or last month or last year, right? So Katie, I know you're part of the book club too. So if you are 80 years old. What would you want to be celebrating in your life, you think? If I am 80 years old, I want to be celebrating my family. And hopefully, I'm going to use the word empire because I'm thinking big. And hopefully the empire I've been able to pass down to them. Yeah, right? I yeah. Love that. hmm. That's a really great question. I love that Laura brought this up from our book club and we'll definitely talk more about it during the book club. But I think if I'm celebrating 80, I still want to feel like I'm as vibrant as I can possibly be. Um, I want to just see my kids, obviously as adults, grown, happy. And when I say happiness, it's really them feeling like they're living their truth and their life on their terms, and they're not ap apologetic about it, and they're genuinely like happy with where they're at. And hopefully, I'll have some grandbabies by then too. Yeah, I love me some grandbabies. <laughs> you might even be having grandbabies by then. Or great grandbabies. By then. <laughs> oh, let's hope I'll be vibrant and energetic enough to still run around with the little the little ones. <laughs> Well, let's dive into today's topic. Let me just make sure we are set up. I think we are. Okay, so if you're joining us, join us here in Zoom or join us here on the live, say hello. But let's talk about really some of the challenges that people often have when they're selling premium sales or high ticket programs. What are some challenges that you often see people struggle with besides a lack of confidence? Like I often think of like what's driving people to not feel as confident uh, uh, with their offers. What do you think some of those challenges are, Katie? So I personally, I think one of the biggest things that I see is people are afraid to invest in that human connection part. Mm. People are afraid to put themselves out there. They're afraid to really have those deeper conversations that's creating that human connection. Yeah, that's And that's something that I think is so vital in boosting your confidence, you know, being confident in what you're bringing to the table to be able to have those connections. Let's break that down a little bit more because I think when people hear that, they're like, well, duh, I do that, right? Yeah. But let's dissect and really break down what that looks like when you are prioritizing business mm -hmm. activities in your business. Oftentimes when Katie and I talk about this, people are like, oh yeah, I already know that. But I challenge you to look at maybe your last last week, right? Let's just look at last week's performance for you. How many times were you having conversations with your ideal, most valuable paying customer? 
were you in the conversations like meaningful back and forth conversations doesn't that meaningful doesn't mean deep and dark and vulnerable meaningful is like truly genuinely like oh like you felt like the other person got to know you and you got to know them and you could actually tell what his or her preferences are right how many of those conversations did you have last week well, and I think also, Elizabeth, when we're talking about deep, you know, it's, you're right. It's not like the deep, dark part of it, but it's, you know, are you able to get in there and get your qualifying questions asked to your NVPs? Yeah. Are you able to have that back and forth like you're talking about? I think that's a really great point to bring up. So that's a great question, right? Human connection. How many of those conversations are you having, whether it's a DM or on a call or in person, are you having with those people, right? And the second thing I challenge people on when it comes to human connection with sales and finding your confidence is that in those conversations is top of mind for you selling and trying to get them to buy your thing, or is it truly showing up to add value to them? there's a difference, right? So when, on the surface, people look at human connection and they're like, yeah, duh, I already know that it's human connection. I already talked to people, but it's like, did you know them well enough to know their preferences? Did you truly show up with the intention to add value to them first? Or did you show up with the intention to try to get a yes to sell, right? So I really love that tip about really the difference between you know, selling high ticket versus all other. And I think when you show up in that genuine human connection, to your point, that's how you get really confident as well. I love that. This also builds upon that. This is my tip. You know, I often say that a good salesperson is so good that you don't even realize that you've been sold to, but a bad salesperson, you know, because it feels really sleazy. And another way to really boost your confidence is to truly listen. When I'm coaching my clients on selling high ticket premium pricing, I often say, are you listening to the details that matter? Are you listening to the details that matter to the other person? And I'm going to give you an example about how powerful this is. I was just recently in a coaching session with one of my clients inside of the Customer Yes Lab, and she's been already working with me for over a year. And she considers herself an introvert. And when I say an introvert, she was so shy to just be on camera to talk about her services, to teach a tutorial, to even do a live, right? And when I asked her after a year of working together, like what has been one of the most positive experiences she had working with me inside of the Customer Yes Lab? And she said, Elizabeth, I remember our coaching group sessions and you would have us do role-playing with listening to the details that matter. And at the time, I just thought this is a little silly right? But she said, now fast forward a year later, and I'm realizing that, wow, this is so powerful when it comes to high ticket sales, that I really need to listen to the details that matter. And she said to me, Elizabeth, that has been a game changer. And for her, she is charging now, like what she used to consider outrageous hourly rates for her services. And she's a makeup artist. But it's that type of, of, of really authenticity that allows you to show up with complete confidence. So that's another tip that I would love to share. What else do you have, Katie, that you think would be helpful for our, our community? So honestly, and this kind of builds on, <clears throat> excuse me, exactly what you were saying is when we are trying or we're striving to really sell at that higher ticket level, it really comes down to your messaging. And you need to be conscious of your messaging. What is your messaging portraying? Mm -hmm. You know, kind of exactly what you said. You don't want to come off as sleazy. That's not how you want to come off. So what is your messaging portraying? What light is it shining on you? This is so important with helping you with confidence.
Yeah. Oftentimes people think that it's the product or it's the credibility or it's the years of experience, but really, you know, Katie, when you're talking about messaging, it's not just like the right stories, but it's really clarity in your messaging. And I'll just add to that, you know, you have to know when it comes to boosting your confidence, the difference between who is your ideal MVP, Mm -hmm. your most valuable paying customer, and who's not. Okay. If you've been through any of my master classes, I often talk about the empowered version of your MVP and the survival version of your MVP. And so you need to ask yourself, like, who is my ideal MVP and who is not? And when you have this level of clarity, your confidence shines because you can literally walk away from someone who is not your ideal MVP. And this is so powerful for you because I often say that just because a customer has money in their wallet does not mean they're the right customer for you. Okay, I'm going to bring you back if you know you've ever been into salary negotiation, if you worked in corporate or had a job, right? The person that's willing to walk away from the deal when negotiating, regardless of what the terms are, if they're not favorable for her or him, is the one that comes across confident and the one that comes across like they've got the upper hand. And when this is exactly what it feels like when you are clear with your messaging, as Katie alluded to, and you are clear with who is your ideal MVP and who's not, you are willing to walk away from a message that doesn't resonate with you, that doesn't reflect who you are, that doesn't reflect how you operate, how you work. And then even even though your competitors might be saying all of that, you're so clear with your messaging and how it's different because you truly understand the clarity with your MVP. And that's huge with the way you show up. It helps you boost your confidence because you know like what you're willing to, to give away and what you're willing to walk away from, right? I love that, Katie. One of the last things as we begin to wrap up today's conversation that I want to leave you with when it comes to thinking about how to boost your confidence is that I often say that when it comes to pricing, you know, higher, right, many people think that charging more or creating an elevated premium brand is just all about adding zeros to your price point, but it's not. You know, you have to realize is what Katie and I have been talking about is that confidence really comes from what? It really comes from predictable outcomes. It comes from you feeling confident because you've done it over and over again that you likely know what the outcome is going to be, right? And when I'm coaching my clients, especially when they're starting to put together a high ticket program or charging more, or consolidating all their different products to charge more to hit their sales goals faster, I often say you've got to tap into your courage, not your confidence. How are they different? I want you to think back to times in your life where you've had to tap into courage. For me, I remember moments where we were, you know, one time I was at a um, a sports tournament, and there was this boy who was probably you know, 11 years old, and he was probably like beating up a girl against the fence and she was crying and everybody was just walking by her, like thinking they were playing and no one paid attention to her. But out of the corner of my eye, without even thinking, I ran over there. I made such a huge scene yelling at this boy to stop. He finally ran off And here I was comforting this little girl. She was probably about 12 or 13, asking her where her parents were. And after I consoled her, I turned around, walked back to my group. And I remember standing there, a man said to me, wow, jokingly, he said, wow, I guess we have a wife beater in the making there, huh? And I remember standing there and thinking, this isn't even funny. And I remember saying to him, well, let's just hope he doesn't meet your daughter one day right? And to me, that's an example of 
having to step into your courage where all of a sudden without even thinking, you're just doing what you believe is right. And here's the difference. Courage is when you are not attached to the outcome. Courage is you owning your values and reacting and behaving in a way that regardless of what the outcomes are, you feel aligned to your authenticity and your integrity and you're showing up because you believe that's what you need to do. That's the right thing for you, regardless of what the outcome is. And oftentimes in sales, we're so attached to the outcome of hoping and praying that we're going to get a sale that we often, it just overwhelms us and it paralyzes us and we start to lose confidence, right? So I share this as an example because I know many of us, we have had to shift between confidence and courage. And so I want to make sure that when you're thinking about how you can boost your confidence when it comes to high ticket sales, it's really to say, okay, how can I find my courage now instead of my confidence, right? And that's just a really quick mindset shift that can help you really close that deal at a high ticket, right? So as Katie and I begin to wrap up to one of the things that Katie and I really wanted to bring to the table is that, you know, Katie, as you know, is an expert on my team. She's focused on lead generation for high ticket sales. And so Katie, tell us a little bit about some of the, the limited opportunities or limited spots you have open in the next couple of weeks for some confidence connect calls with you. So I am actually going to be opening up some time slots over the next couple of weeks, like Elizabeth just said, and I really want to help anybody who wants to jump on a call with me. Let's identify, let's identify maybe what the problem is that you're facing in regards to confidence. Let's kind of fix that. And then let's use one of me or Elizabeth's strategies to eliminate that. Because a really big part of confidence, and I, I would love to leave everybody just with this little tip. When I think of confidence and follow me along this path, I know some of you guys are going to be like, oh my goodness, Katie, no way. Don't forget to add value. Be so confident in what you are selling and what you are serving and providing your MVPs. Don't be afraid to provide value. Maybe it is a podcast that you recorded on another person's show. And you say, you know what? That could provide value to this person. Don't be afraid to give that out for free because mm -hmm. it will come back to you. And I truly think that that really ties into having the confidence in yourself and what you're providing and what you're serving your MVPs with. Yeah. So I think what you're going to get with Katie is one, she's going to help you diagnose out of all of the challenges that you have with the, the, the missing confidence, which one is really the big thing. I often tell my students and clients that it's that one big domino, right? There's a whole bunch of things you can be doing, yes. but the one that you need to figure out is the one big domino that if you knock down it knocks everything else down. So Katie's going to help you identify the big domino right? And then she's going to give you some of the tips and strategies that we've been talking about to really personalize it to how you show up. So like Katie's really great at like brainstorming and being a sounding board. So for example, like she just gave you that tip on adding value. It's going to be helpful for her to have some context about some of the content creation that you're doing. And she's going to be able to personalize that and say, well, if you're doing a podcast, how about this? Or if you're just doing post, how about this? Or, you know, like what are some different assets that you've already created that is already available that you can just repurpose to add value to the conversations that you're having, right? And so I want you to take the opportunity to book this call with her to connect on the confidence boost call because Katie and I, right, really want to create a community where we're all about helping compassionately ambitious entrepreneurs thrive. There's no catch to this, right? There's no like, you know, backhand sort of like, oh, we've got, what do we have up our sleeves, right? This is truly us showing up and saying, look, you can grow a business by over giving and being compassionately ambitious. You can grow a business by adding value and stepping into your empowered CEO with an abundance mindset, and it will be reciprocated to you, right? And this is so powerful because you've seen, you know, Laura Myers, who just last week talked about how do you create win-win relationships. This is what makes us here inside of this community of the Empowered CEO, Charging More, Working Smarter, so powerful. We are going deep on the human connection and the high touch 
And this is really the differentiator in your business. So take Katie up on that offer. Katarina is what she goes by online. Send her a DM if you're not sure and want to just have some questions. But for a limited time, she's opened up some time slots. I've asked her to do that as a way, you know, we're already in February and it is a way to move forward. And so with that, Katie, anything else you want to add before we wrap up today's call? No, I am just so appreciative to be able to jump on here and go live with you and speak to our group members. And please, yes, please book that call because that's really what it's all about is I want to give back. So there is no um, anything attached to it. It's just really us giving back and helping our group. Exactly. I often say we got to grow together. That's really what makes our yes. community space here different. All right. So with that, it's a wrap for the CEO Power Hour. Thanks for joining us today. And we will see you same place, same time next week. Take care. Now. Bye, guys.